bit the sensory creativity is a bit of 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 You know, we get things started here at Hops on Birch on Poetry Night with a toast. And uh, true to form, I just scribbled this one down, and I'm not sure if it actually rhymes, but let's see what happens. Um, all right. You will notice that I'm holding an Odell glass. It's because Odell is rad and, and freaking cooler and shit, and they decide to sponsor us tonight. Um, so if you buy a 90 shilling, yeah, the proceeds from that will go towards supporting poetry here in Flagstaff. Um, and, uh, and it's only $3.50. And we also have on Firkin, which is normally $6, it's a raspberry chocolate stout um, from College Brewing. And that's being sold for $3.50 tonight. Um, so drink up, yo. Yo, bo show. All right, raise your glasses, everybody. Poetry and beer is why we are here. Thank you all for your words and cheer. It's time to hear you, my dear. So grab your glass and drink that beer. Cheers. Mm. That is some tasty beer. Who is that first on there? I can't. Who is that? What's that name on that paper? Yonder, fourth upon thy table. This, I believe, says Leia Waller. Yeah, all right, put your hands together. Good evening, everybody. Sad that the Broncos did not win. Sad that the Broncos did not try. Another story, whatever. Uh, okay, so I just had a couple poems published in the Noise magazine. And I'm really fucking proud of it. So I'm gonna read it to you guys. And I hope you like it. This first one is uh, one I've been working on for a while. It's about that fucked up little middle space where you just really need to break up with that guy and you just can't quite do it, even though he's a shithead. Um, but you love him anyway. And you also love wine and alcohol. So, this one's called Where the Wine Runs. Dude and the guy uh, back where you're talking. Shut up. Okay, Where the Wine Runs. Between the taste of your hunger and the yellow weeds, where my childhood can run and stampede, where calluses form, petals take each other to bed, and thighs moan rivers when you pull. If I knew, love, what makes the maple red, I would tell you, I would let you rule the world with it, so I could be the high heels on your arm. Between your head and my lap and your cigarette on the corner looking right through me. Between a tundra we gasp together and a desert peppering the wild between our lips. But for now, we're just two interruptions in the shade with bubble glasses, seasoned grapes, and dreams to spill into the cracking earth. Can you hear it? Kicking the wind between your bones, the block, the kick, the zipper that separates us, all but a rock smoothed over. Drink, drink, drunk with me, and it's all but a rock smoothed over. We can step aside when knives stampede, drink when the rest fall trampled. I know, I know, love, what you always meant to tell me. All right, y'all, I got one more for you, and then I'll get out of your way and let the last, next poet step into it. Okay, this next one, uh, since it's a slightly wine theme issue, is called Pinot Noir. And for those of you who don't know about Pinot Noir, it's a wonderful wine. 
Drink it if you haven't. Continue to drink it if you do already. Um, and one thing Pinot Noir is known for is just staying with you. Like that finish, that last sip just stays and lingers forever. So this is my honor of Pinot Noir. You make me breakfast in the morning. Call the next day, twice. Send a bouquet of roses. Take me out to dinner, not just to the local diner, to a five star in the big city. And over salmon and ravioli and walnut salad, you say just the right thing. And I fall for you completely. Lush, slow lover in velvet suit, kissing me slowly, igniting a match across the taste buds of my tongue, slow saffron flame, feeding on my thirst, holding me long into the night, hugging the valley of my waist, brushing my shoulder with your thumb, years open and close in my mouth. In the grave, your taste is still kissing me. It never stopped. It continues to break open, a slow purple sunrise as my world goes dark. Everybody give it up one more time for Leah. Thank you. No, that's awesome. She's, so look. Pick up a copy of the Noise magazine. Yes, 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 we love you. We love Thank you. you. Thank you. One more time for Leah, people. Yeah. All right, and uh, Ian, who's next? Hand me that uh, paper, please. Uh, thank you, good sir. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Everyone, please welcome Mr. Eric Dovigi to the stage, please. Thank you. Hello. I'm gonna, I just wrote this poem a couple days ago, uh, and it goes like this. And in a moment of desperation and creative self-doubt, God lowered the sun on its stage crane, working the block and tackle himself off stage. Liking the effect, he called it night and went to bed. Liking that effect, he woke up. Deadline, seven days. Progress, optimistic. Emotional state, lonely. We must never forget that the divine impulse to say, look what I did, is responsible for our existence. Liking the effect, we make our poems. <coughs> All right, so I feel like um, that was awesome, and it was. So to celebrate that, I'm going to tell you to go drink beer, because that is the, that's America, and maybe Germany and Austria, and Australia, and, uh, and, and Finland, maybe Czechoslovakia, they make some good Pilsner. So go drink beer, get some 90 shilling, get a firkin, it's 350, and it's awesome. Drink, ready, go. Not only uh, a man of, of, of very complex and fast-moving words, but he's also damn righteous and sexy. Uh, Ryan Smalley, come on up here. <laughs> you really underplayed the sexy part. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, I was having trouble deciding which poem I wanted to read first. But fast-moving words, let's do this. <laughs> and so, 
Take the twine tied taut betwixt toes and tips, tear terrorizingly. Grasp until groans aghast go gasping agape and aggrandizingly. Thus, the first and fifteenth fiscal fortnight fight fares forlornly for lonely loners. Lovely lies lived like luxury less ease, lost dumbstruck. Debt demands deed, damn duty to death, divided by boredom or brutality, but beings break beyond boundaries. And so, suicide seeds sown, such strange fruit branches show, the reaper needn't reap what's grown. Deciduous, setting suns share harshest harvests. Mark this, narcissist, marvelous offices offered us profits, deliver, though heartlessly starting this darker scheme, barter these paper means farcically hardening, dollar fiends heaving these horrid strings, needling greedily, stringing so easily, heedlessly, sleeplessly, weaving, glistening, clear scene, safe scene, blanket sheet, fe- reveling, raveling, fabric of time. Fuck me. And sewn. cut from cutaneous cloth, thimbleless threadbare leather. We fabricate their well-being pyramid scheme forever furthering fiefdom as foundation, fingers filed to disintegration. We lacquered the ladders to a gleaming sheen so pristine, rounded rungs rendered slick, resist any climbers, clever or thick. But shed no tears, twas never a fight, and hone no spears, we filled up on our trite. Our overlords hoard us, not torturous, told to us doldrums are sordid, thus shorting our fortune of courting with ennui, so fondly responding by pondering, how would we break from the skin that we're in? We've got manna as media, it's bland, but we feed on it, and even the meaty stuff gives us anemia. We download our shows and we sip on our beers, smoke on that dro, hermetically sealed, Comfort in numbness, we go with the flow, while our minds go withered, stupid, and slow. Thank you. All right, I want to read one more, and this one's way less verbose. (laughs) Uh, This is for a friend of mine who, mysteriously, he is, he lacks a lot of confidence, even though he's one of the coolest people I've ever met. Little orphan boy blue with cement-colored tunes who knows hurt like battlefield soils and inner-city sidewalks. He walks lonely in rush-hour crowds of lovers like a wounded wolf in sunny winter forests. Everybody seems so stable and incompatible while he wanders in transience so ephemeral. It's hard to remember that you are but a sapling and in love you have many rings yet to grow. They say economics is what we do with the only universal currency, time. It's sliding ringed wood chips at this cosmic casino, but you always feel like a one-leaf clover in a dark cave, just echoes of black and ebbing life drain. It's easy to forget that the universe doesn't play against you, dishing dissonant incidents innocently. Nature frowns as she deals you garbage hands, leaving you lost. We all frown. It's our nature, too, after all. But pain is not weakness leaving the body. It's the terraforming of strength. There's room enough for both, and pain is what makes us human. It's okay to hurt. It's it's okay to cry. Know that you are loved amidst great unknowns. Know that you have a home, and know that you are not alone. Because I know loss too, and I built a house from the edges that spilt my blood where I washed the hurt away, and I am one home in this neighborhood, and feel free to crash on my couch anytime. Feel free to crash. Feel free and radical. You have no nuclear family, yet you radiate hope. You are brilliance. You are spires knelt amongst mountains, arms extended to gods praying to alleviate the alluvial fan blades that cut you so deep. But stay strong, you have more than you know. But sadness is the seconds after grenades too close. Surround sound deafness. We're here for you. We hear for you. We hear you. I hope your cinder block sonnets serve as foundation for your own home. May you live in a windowless house, beautifully weathered, hand-formed, and painless. 
May you love like four-leaf clovers with scarcity and wonder and all the best luck. Little orphan boy blue with five strings rusted by perspired hands and scarred fingers. Play on. Thank you so much. I was trying to shake the poet's hand one more time for Ryan Smalley, everyone. So uh, Ryan is a member of this amazing band called uh, Teddy's Bullet. <laughs> I just, I mean, because if it's, if there's a Teddy's bullet, does that mean there's a Teddy's gun or does Teddy's bullet fit in Luke's gun? It's weird. You can get to this whole thing. That's crazy. Your, your, your band name plays mind tricks on me, man. Mind tricks. Hey, uh, Mr. Josh Floyd, where you at, sir? Come here, Josh Floyd. Josh? Josh Floyd. Oh, Josh, that's Josh. Oh, we love Josh. Hi, Josh. He's so... Hello. <laughs> this is a really different environment for me to be at because I'm so used to, to Fire Creek. Um, so this should be fun. Yeah! <laughs> If you've ever heard me do any poetry before, you'll recognize this, hopefully. A pocket full of change. No singles or 20s, just loose jingles from past transactions. Shit. Actions may speak louder than words, but never dollar bills. I knew how that felt once. Burning holes in pockets like sun to eye sockets. I had them, but they spent me now. Copper and nickel weighing heavy on my already weary mind. Stored away in the cerebral piggy bank. One crack from bursting. I'm hurting. I never hit the triple sevens. But I always had some chump change chick. Her favorite pastime was begging at the local 7-Eleven. Optimistic me, think it would all work out till she leaves me standing there. Just a pocket full of change. Like a box of broken mirrors. Reflecting ambitious ambiguity so unclear that my heart has declared mutiny, self-scrutiny, left this image six feet under. Girl, what did you do to me? Cigarettes and liquid strength get me through these days, but I'm over it. I count my losses on a monetary abacus. Not again. I'm hurling jingles at these penny slot girls like I'm going to live life like a high roller, even if I'm not betting too high. Who knows? Maybe I'll hit the jackpot. Maybe some assorted numbers on a slip of paper will land me in the Mega Millionaire's Club, and as I drive my Ferrari back to my modest estate, I'll stop by that 7-Eleven for a whiff of nostalgia. A kid outside with his dime a dozen, cash guzzling, no loving female companion, I'll tell him, I see you got your pockets full of change, so here's some advice. Turn and leave. Tap dance those souls down to the coin star, and let it tell you how much they're really worth. That was one. Do I get to do it now? Cool. Ooh. Let's see, I haven't done this one in a while. This is the second poem I ever wrote. Let's see if I can remember it all. I wish I could take history into the aperture of my iris. Blink snapshots and constant f-stops and no gain or grain or miscalculated white balance would disrupt my viewfinders. I would put the world perfectly in thirds. Because rules is rules for so-called role models to use and simultaneously abuse. My wish isn't to be rude, but to cherish these photos my mind knew, then grew. Each worth more than a thousand words. You see, I see in R's, G's, and B's, but the paparazzi will give it to you in ones, twos, and threes, because this fatal frame featured before your impressionable eyes is lies in the guise of entertainment. Producers, directors, corporate sponsorship ties. 
Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. I'm hating it. Rearranging my mind. Life's files in an unorganized cabinet. Beauty lumped in with hate. Love mixed in with fate. But don't worry, we've got a couple of magic lassos that'll help you get rid of that feeling. Some color correction for the beliefs in your mind. Thinking black and white, they say. Seppi is too individualistic, so be realistic. We're all just part of this panoramic conglomerate. Ugh. This conglomerate panorama twit pick. No need to nitpick, sirs. Madams. Just sheepish magnets. Inner mirrors reflecting light. They call truth. The media. So I'll break free. Turn my ratio to zero and let no light blind my internal workings because I've had enough sunspots on these lenses implanting. These people are evil and they are not your friends. Oh shit. Brad and Angelina are back at it again? So just take the negatives from that old dirty 35 millimeter stored in the hippocampus to the temporal lobe and just know. Those memories aren't yours. They're forged. I wish I could take history into the aperture of my iris. Snap images of injustice, feelings of peace, and real life in the Middle East. You see, the media makes us into what it wants to see, so... Rabbits rapidly reproducing ratings received, but honestly, we've been deceived. No more will I be the hunted hare, but the hound sniffing out the fox, CBS, NBC, ABC shit. Even DVD. So armed with these two portals to a world filled of knowledge, these two pathways to a world filled of solace, I will keep only the love. None of the hate. Extreme, face, uh, extreme close ups on faces filled with joy. Long shots establishing the scenes of our lives. So come on, guys. Turn your apertures to wide and snapshot your lives. Thank you. Well, holy shit, I've been waiting for Josh Floyd to finally get up here for far too long. Another hand for that guy right there. Next up is, does that say Brian on there? Yes, Brian, 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 yes. All right, well, I'm from Phoenix. So I'm, not, I'm not part of this like, real cool poetry club here. I'm going to do my best. I'm probably going to like sing the song, so. On conveyor belt highways, two thousand lamps line the road. Buzzing bugs, oh, they based at the breaks. A calling bird, she sings, she crows. Oh, I'm not a puppet, my mind makes the motion And you can break out Like the stitches to your side, it's been sewn This will hold Sorry, I'm like singing all the songs in my head <laughs> well, there's poison in the water, whales in empty well, bad berries in your basket, bad inmates in your cell. You've been begging for a drink in the shadows of your swell. Well, I think my secrets are safe with me, but there's no way to tell. I've got hope that the dopest of all reality hits home in the closest call to catastrophe, helping disease on the weasels that think this is comedy. I just have to do the rap game and have a sing. Now you can't fuck with me like Mr. Bally now. Whisper rim is just to blind me. Put a check to the rhythm. The man and this shit's right on time like Rome you can go home while I cruise through these rhymes I'm taking this shit serious man look Obama it's a crime it's vibrant and it's stable invisible it's seen it halted when thermometers drained out their mercury I must have wheeled the road around so that I drive it straight the end is on my thumb I burn the fire blooms and lights the way it lights the way it lights the way it lights the way on escalator as parades, a billion floats blot the sky. Fuzzy muzzles distaste, earth she quakes. A fallen girl she bleeds, she dies. Twisting rolled in her spine. 
spine. She says, I'm not a puppet, my mind makes the motion. And you can break out. Like the words you learned from getting the poem. Like the trolley to the rail in the road. Like the scar tissue stuck to your bone. This will hold. That's it. Uh, one more time for Brian, everybody. Next, we have this uh, other guy with the beard that's going to share, and his name happens to be Ian. Ian, come up here, Eddie. Come, come on in. Come on in. Get a beard. Get a 90 shilling. They're 350. Go hops. All right. Some of you know that I try to write a poem every time there's a poetic event, and so this is what happened. Hero is a big word, one that not everyone can be. But I know another word, a better word, a more fitting word for you, and that is magnificent. Not everyone can be a hero. It's a term that's lost its luster, but everyone has a moment when they are magnificent. A musician who stops the world in its tracks on the perfectly placed note in front of an unexpecting audience in a train station or on a street corner. A policeman who stops traffic for a cat holding a kitten in its mouth or holsters a gun knowing that life is, better, is what's needed from his hands. A teacher who spends an entire paycheck for school supplies that are not budgeted by the, by the district or better yet realizes that bad grades might mean that a student needs to feel like a great person before she can feel like a scholar. An athlete who realizes that good sportsmanship is greater than glory. A painter who changes ruins into renaissance. A monk who stands between battle lines for peace. Heroes. They may or may not be, but magnificent they are, and so are you. The time you did something kind, beautiful, brave, gracious, giving, human. Magnificence is painted on you every time you stand up straight and make someone, anyone, Remember that they have a pulse, and it's quickened. Thank you. Everybody, please welcome to the stage, as in his own words, again, Mr. Eric Dovigi. Eric, come up here, please, sir. Hello, um, I play in a, a band and I write a lot of the lyrics, maybe half of them, so I don't have another poem for you, but I'm going to read some of the lyrics from uh, some of our tunes. The first one is from a song called Christmas in July, and it goes, Papa plays the Zydeco and Mama plays the horses, and my sister has a grandkid and she's only 35, and me, I have a guitar and I almost feel alive. Papa met the man he loves when I was only 12, and my mama met and lost the man she loved when she was 17. Sister is a nihilist and says she don't believe in those things. But as for me, you are the reason that I'd make a lousy nihilist. 
I'd sleep, I'd sneak in a feeling when my nihilist buddies weren't looking. They'd say, hey, what has happened to your face? And I'd say, don't worry, it's only a mating mechanism. <laughs> now, Papa lives in Portugal and Mama lives in Spain and my sister lives in Michigan and me, I live wherever I think I might find another girl like you. Thanks. Um, um, this other one is very short. It's from a song called You Are Red and it goes, you are red. I don't know why, but those are the glasses I wear when you're around. I am a grapefruit, I guess, or something even less sweet than that. A cricket bat or a welcome mat. And um, I'll do one more from a song called Sagittarius, and it goes, my girlfriend says I'm a Sagittarius, and that's why I don't much communicate, but I think it's more due to stress. I think my grandmother can't wink, but she thinks she can, because she'll blink at me. I can never tell. My grandfather looked like James Dean 50 years ago. Now he resembles an eggplant with arms, because he, he only wears sweaters in purple and green, and his liver and spleen are in need of a clean, but he's old. Let him drive how he wants to. Jesus Christ. My father and mother and sister and brother all live in a shoe with a window or two, and they never are bothered to lock the front door, but I'm sending them money as soon as I can, and some gas for their van, and a bucket of change that I keep by the stove for their coffee, some funds for their afternoon coffee, some funds for their afternoon coffee. My girlfriend says I'm a Sagittarius, and that's why I don't much communicate, but I think it's more due to stress. Thanks. <laughs> Eric DeVigi, ladies and gentlemen, that man is a damn talented individual with, like, really smart brain parts. All right, next up for a return visit, second time tonight, our very alliterative, um, um, consonant-oriented Ryan. Come on down. First the haiku, <laughs> barley rhymes, where the poets spit rhymes, and there's a f complimentary splash zone. <laughs> Fucking asshole. <laughs> Sorry, no. <clears throat> he got my laptop. I love that thing. <laughs> All right, here's a real poem. That wasn't even a haiku. <laughs> I'm just mad. This is called Backtrack. It's about remembering stuff. Looking down at the afterburner of the festivities, the coals glimmer and sparkle like constellations. Star shining last lights trace time, leaving it unfilled. Kindle crackling pops like mid-air pressure change. We've just begun our descent, and for one second, I can't hear the mumbled murmurs of midnight mortality. Nostalgia is the cousin of regret, soft focus, vignettes where naivety becomes in a sense, inability dissipates recompense. She always slept on her back, even as an infant. Looking backwards, cinders grow into half-burned beams, reassembling into bandsawed bows. Teams of prospective partygoers pull matches from piles of pallet plywood. Sunbeams slide back to their solar source. Celestial starlight fades out of the night and back into her, her eyes. She arises. Her silhouette pirouettes to the party and two partners emerge at her side while she kisses back holy spirits and pushes them aside. Effervescent somnolence pours back into its black flask, into its glass cask, one of thousands produced with its distinctive distillation, crystalline coloration, a cherry libation. They say vodka is the Russian word for water but with the notion of trickiness and deception. In a moment separate, three kids scrounge four fives for a fifth. Liquor laws leave them little choice, but in reverse, they are paid to give it away. In another moment, a barely lingual binge drinker baby boy booze buyer pulls back his phone and verbally pushes back the tears of a girl who tried to look into a sun. Sunshine yanks clouds across her skyscape like marionettes as she jumps in a wide arc eastward. A young man catches pallets from the bed of his truck, places them in their haphazard state behind a liquor store, and drives home. 
A mother beckons her child asleep in the morning light and places an EpiPen in, the, in a pair of jeans from the top of the dryer while she undoes the laundry. And the moon winds back hundreds of times in the needle's eye until out of sight on a 4th of July where a man takes that same EpiPen and induces seizures in a teenager on a day where the clouds hung like puppets over a poorly planned picnic. 75 days forward, a boy would become a man in the eyes of the law, although he had sampled the spoils many Saturdays prior. Moving forward in time, he would meet an almost adult and would be the first kiss to break through her plywood shyness. American Eagle jeans became short skirts and Haynes gave ways to Victoria's as she spun her threaded world around this dying star for him to burn. She told him she had to leave for school in the fall. He told her he couldn't care less. He thought she might stay. That same day, sun rays scraped the landscape as twilight tones touched the faces of future reunion members. Plectrum picked strings, the soundtrack to a mixed message meeting, nostalgic laughter, its drummer, held together with the smell of smoke and ethanol. One boy would wield cans of PBR, only $2. He grabbed from the fridge at his parents' house. $100 for a half pint. Yeah, $100 for eight ounces. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> He grabbed from the fridge at his parents' house another, a flask his older brother bought him when he was 16, a container one girl would become more than familiar with. This same girl would stand up and try to catch her breath in the back seat of her car. The moon would reach its zenith, the palette almost burnt. One enterprising boy would check on this girl two hours later and notice that the night sky had stolen the star shining lights in her eyes, leaving her unfulfilled. And thus we began our descent into ashen constellations. Thank you so much. Give it up uh, for uh, Joe. Joe, where you at, buddy? Joe, did he get here? He is. There he is right there. Coming up. Everyone give it up for Joe. So it's really scary. I was just looking at the other side of that camera. So now I know what I'm going to look like on the other side of it. It's ridiculous. You look the same, just smaller. <laughs> Kinda. But I don't know, man. <laughs> hey, Ian, did you say something about haikus earlier or something? Uh, they're awesome. <laughs> I don't know, you said something about football and haikus. Yeah, make a football haiku. Okay, well, I made, I made, a, I kind of stole partially, kind of adjusted a, a, a football haiku. Yes. This face right here is my face to express my feeling about the Super Bowl. <laughs> Future reference. Anyway, beyond that, that was my football haiku. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really like football. Um, my mom loves football, which makes no sense. She's like 54. <laughs> yeah, me neither. None of my brothers like it at all. It makes no sense. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just it's wrong. I, I try not to think about it. It's, it's one of those things that just stay in the black pit back there. All right. So... I wrote this poem something like, I want to say between 28 to 36 hours of a three-day stretch of not sleeping at all. And that was because a good friend of mine died and I didn't feel like sleeping. So this is kind of a chaos, for the lack of a better term. Here you go. Two storm cells collide. The first, a blasting concoction of slashing lightning swirling in a chaos of debris, violently ripped from its resting place to torn and torn into razor-like pieces gyrating around a pseudo-calm funnel that introduces tentacle-like streamers of anger. To keep the whole thing going, it feels red, riding currents of heat, gathering force with every undercurrent adding and added and living force extinguished. The other, a churning mass, sluggish yet powerful, determined to shred every tree and wash away the memories etched into the earth and radiating a sharp wind, screaming a warning, a sorrowful cry of help for uh, heralding the entrance to a hell never imagined as the two bind together 
in a perfect union towards the same purpose. Thank you. Give it up one more time for Joe, everybody. Joe. Yeah, nice. And uh, so, we're coming down to the close of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. If you have not, there's a sheet of paper. Tosh, can you hold that up? The lovely Tasha is holding that up. If you have not put a word on that paper, please do so. And next up, we have, uh, yeah, he's getting ready to come on up here and do some stuff for us. Jeff, give it up for Jeff, everybody. I'm tall. I'll tell you exactly what I'm trying to say. You walked into her warm bedroom, clouds in your eyes and stars in your skies. Said not one word, just took what you thought was yours. You had that girl back home, sweet as honey, devoted and waiting. Waiting on you to come back home. Can't have it both ways. Up or down, big or small, running around town. So you took it and you shook it. You made, it, made sure your best friend and newly acquainted lover would never speak of the night she wished never happened and you can barely remember. So now you're painted into a corner, the woman you like to love and the woman you love to like at odds. Only one is in on it, but both feel cheated, used and abused. Now I'm in the middle. Only your one night of primal sloppy urges has to be kept from your year of dissolving love. For if they meet, there will be a supernova of pain you won't want to see. The woman, your mistress, is my best friend, and your woman, the love, is my target of mind-numbing, heart-thumping, 21-story roof rooftop-jumping infatuation. She's too good for you to do what you do without repercussions. Alas, I can't reveal what I know, and I cannot unknow what I should. I know your Disney princess would be crushed, and therefore my crush would be destroyed. She's already a mess. Can't you move one way or another? You hold her down, back and forth, as quick as the tides. You're hot and cold. Break her in or break her heart. Oh, please break her heart so I can mend it with the precision of a watchmaker. I'll make it tick-tock, bump-thump, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. It'll beat again, but to the rhythm of someone that'll give her the world, not because I can, but because I can't. I know she has to heal on her own, so she must have space. I've fallen head over heels, but never before like this. Each time before it's just happened, this time it's grown through a mutual understanding. Do us a favor and get the fuck out of Dodge so I can move forward, she can move on, and we can move in. We've got a few more if there's time. Just, just let me know. Uh, this is a short one. You gotta get that feeling back. Can't last forever, but never say never. Lounging by a creek on a warm, sunny day, Hopping on the rocks makes it all okay. Answers revealed and questions concealed. The two seem so surreal, but this could be real. Why do ants choose to fly? Why do infants choose to cry? Do you deserve to die? Do you deserve to cry? Gotta get that feeling back. There's no turning back, and why do you attract? Not for long, though. Too much to feel in these days. Too, much, too few minutes to process. Bottle them up and bottoms up. Save it for a rainy day or a sunny one, you want to go away. You can take a picture or even press record, but you'll never be there. You'll always be aware that you'll never get that feeling back. Thanks. All right. Detached. It's how I react, react to a situation that can't, in fact, bring back the peace of my heart and the chunk of my soul. I showed you and I exposed my inner being. Leave it unrefrigerated and it goes stale. Stale like corn chips on the beach. Soggy and barely room temperature, so keep it to yourself. Put my heart back on the shelf. 
Go fuck yourself. I can't begin to express the thoughts and I'm afraid of and laugh at simultaneously. I guess that's just how it goes when you let it down to get it up. And the object of my infatuation can't get enough of the abuse. Go back to your failures and make sure you can't succeed just one more time. Make sure you can't find yourself once again. Now I'll take off my coat to go have a smoke. If I'm cold and numb, I may as well feel it too. Without feelings, I'll just stew on what can't be real, but I'll always feel. I got a Christmas present that made me feel like I went to heaven. After an hour, it gouged my soul and made me know not to show my soul to anyone but a foe. At least you expect to feel pain from your enemy. But you? It's for the best, but God fucking damn it, I don't want it. I hope you find happiness because I set you free. Just promise me one thing. Find someone better than me. P.S. It's not your boyfriend. Thank you, Jeff. You're welcome. <laughs> That's a tall man with good facial hair. Just saying. Um, so, coming up is my personal favorite part of the night. This is where we get to put together your words into one epic. Can we do one before you do that? It's five seconds. Is it yours? Like, what? Yeah, it's a limerick. Oh, well, we love limericks here, and almost nobody ever does them, so come on down. Wait, you got into who is oh. coming up? This is Beard One and Beard Two guy. Yeah. <laughs> right now we have the beards. <laughs> yeah, when we used to do folk music. All right, we got Eric Hayes and Alex Gerber up here to give you a lyric. Limerick. 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 It involves lyrics. All right. You're fucking way taller than I am. It's okay. I'll, I'll project. Okay. I once said Russ Wilson's dick. He was over surprisingly quick. I wanted a quarter, perhaps a real sporter, but all I got was just sick. <laughs> I, 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 I have nothing witty to say after that, that all the wit just got sucked out of the room. Wow, that was amazing. Holy crap. Man. Was this not like the most disappointing Super Bowl to watch ever? Not and I'm I'm just saying I I am so happy that Seattle won. Like I want you to know that however, I like a good game. And this was like the most boring game ever. I was like, well, they fucked up and they scored and they fucked up and they scored and they fucked up and they scored. And, they and, they scored. and it just was like, okay. Anyway, coming up, it was sad, it was sad, it was sad, terrible. Terrible when athletes who get paid millions of dollars to run on a field lose a game. That just breaks my heart. All right, coming up for the best part of my night, my uh, beautiful brother from another mother, Khalif. Khalif, come on up here and show us how awesome these people's words are. <laughs> maybe, maybe a different father. I, I have to sit down. It's been an eventful oh, night for me. Listen, I am not the creative genius of this piece. You guys are. So don't get upset with me. Nothing beats a failure but a try. But a try. Nothing beats a failure, but a try, but a try, but a try. I cry dangerous rivers of tears as the bodacious reality sets in, like moist sandpaper droplets <laughs> covering 
all of my dark ebony skin. No bukkake. Just precious oils of indifference. It's like Snuffleupagus and Big Bird made out and had a walrus chucklehead baby. <laughs> Let's communicate mano e mano on this paper thin perineum of reality. And if it don't work out, I will give you some alimony and discharge you like this. Shoo. Because T-Baby likes cock and broken promises are presumptuous. I'm ambivalent about the whole thing. It's culture shock for me. Water, please, because I know the poet won't read it. It's for the bar dude. Piss off whoever wrote that. <laughs> because I'm informing you that I'm connected with you and you with me and let's tickle. <laughs> Collective consciousness. Not in some Oompa Loompa fashion. <laughs> and not as easy as one passes flatulence on a, <laughs> on a cold Sunday's Eve. No, I'm talking true five skin perfection. Five skin. You and me, and that's the way it's gotta be. Cause nothing beats a failure but a try. But a try. I'm Khalif. This is Ian, and we are. We are Farley Rhymes. We are Farley Rhymes. We want to, and that's Zona. We again want to give a shout out to Old Dale's. Brewing Company for sponsoring us tonight, right? Yeah, 90 shillings. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bringing poetry to the world in Northern Arizona, especially. Yeah, yeah. How many shillings? 90 of them. Oh, I got 90 shillings. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Thank you. Good night. Is that it? America and beer. Beer. <laughs>